There are, there are many different kinds of alternative splicing. So um, there can be alternative promoters, which is the beginning of the gene. There can be alternative poly A sites, so that's the three prime end of the gene. Alternative five prime splice sites, we'll talk about what a five prime splice site is in a minute, but it's the beginning of an intron. Alternative three prime splice sites. And then there are exons called cassette exons that are either uh, spliced in or spliced out. That's the example I was showing you a minute ago. And there are mutually exclusive exons where either one exon is put in or the other, but not both. And then, of course, the simplest form of alternative splicing is to not splice at all. So you can splice or not splice, and that would be a retained intron. So there are many different types of alternative splicing. The, the most common type of alternative splicing is the cassette exon, where a, an exon is either spliced in or spliced out. Now, how many different proteins can be made from one gene? So this is the alpha tropomyosin gene from RAT. And these are some of the uh, different uh, splice forms of the alpha tropomyosin gene. And so you can see that um, th there are many different uh, splice forms in fibroblasts. Those are essentially uh, undifferentiated cells. Then here's other isoforms in the brain, in the smooth muscle. And so one of the, the important things about splicing is that it can be developmentally and tissue specifically controlled. And so one gene in one tissue might make one protein, but in another tissue it makes a very different protein. Um, and so again, that, that's how we add to complexity. So just how complex can it get? Well, here's the current record holder. So this is the Drosophila DSCAM gene, which is involved in axonal guidance in the brain. And uh, Drosophila DSCAM has three regions of uh, mutually exclusive exons. So there's one here, one here, one here, and one there. This region has 48, 33, there's two over there, and there's 12 back here. So if you do the math, there are over 38,000 different possible spliced isoforms of the DSCAM gene. And to the best of our knowledge, all of these isoforms can be made. So that means that this one gene in Drosophila can make three times as many different proteins as there are genes in the Drosophila genome. So it is very likely that in higher eukaryotes, such as you and me, our proteome is um, a well over hundreds, hundreds of thousands to, to millions of different proteins. So just with that thought in mind, now let's look back at our complexity problem. But this time, instead of looking at genes, let's look at how many introns uh, each organism has and then how that scales with complexity. So in uh, E. coli, it has no introns. Prokary prokaryotes do not have these types of introns. Um, S. cerviciae budding yeast has a few introns. It only has about 250 introns. Now as we go up the, the evolutionary ladder, um, the roundworm has about uh, 99,000 introns, again, more than the, the fruit fly, simply because it has more genes. Uh, but as we go up now to, to humans and, and to mice, you can see that the number of introns are, are going up dramatically. And because um, the number of proteins that you can make scales, so let's say, exponentially with, uh, with the number of introns, you can imagine that our proteomes can be much more complicated than those of the other organisms.